Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my February reading wrap up. So we'll talk about all the books that I managed to read in February. I try to really prioritize black writers as I do usually for February but this year it didn't quite work out because I had two big fantasy books that I was still in the middle of and I wanted to finish those off as well. So it could have gone better but I still finished a decent amount of books. But before we go into those I want to share uh, some stats with you because my main goal for this year and the previous years is to read down my own physical TBR and to do that I am tracking some stats that I want to update you on on a monthly basis. So to catch you up quickly, at the beginning of the year I had 47 books on my physical TBR and January didn't go so well, it was my birthday month so I got gifted quite a few books. So in January I added 10 books to that. Um, and that is the like net of what I added. So taking, you know, the books I've read and then the books I've gotten net, I added 10 books. So at the beginning of February, my TBR was at 57 books. And during the month of February, I managed to reduce that number, but only a little bit. So let's take a look at the numbers that are important and yeah, let me get you through this. So the first important number is obviously how many books I have read and that was eight, which I'm very happy with. I think I do average between six and eight books a month. So that's uh, quite good for me and I'm very happy with it. Then we have the books that I bought or received as gifts and those were three and those are usually audiobooks so I don't have a backlog of audiobooks. I always get one when I want to listen to it but I also got a book that I wanted to buy last year but I just couldn't get a hold of it so now finally I got Monstrous Volume 8 which makes me really happy. So three books bought and then for Borrowed, I also have three books. One of those was one of the books I was in the middle of. And then we also have, again, audiobooks. I count the audiobooks that I can listen to for free on Audible as Borrowed because I'm not buying them, I'm not spending money on them, and I don't own them. So that's where that number comes from. And so taking this all together, I added six books to my TBR in the month of February. And during the math, we have eight read books, six added books. So I reduced my TBR by two books and now we are at 55 books on my physical TBR, which is still a lot, but yeah, we will slowly, slowly make our way through that throughout the year now. Usually January I add some, December I add some, and then all the other months I chip away at it. So that's where we're standing. Those are the numbers. And now we got eight amazing books to talk about, so let's not waste any time. The first book I finished in February was a short story collection and that was The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This one I enjoyed immensely. I think this one has like nine stories if I'm correct. So it is quite a short collection and the stories vary in length, they vary in themes, but they all involve black women. They deal with their passions, their lives, their faith and everything in between. We do have young women, we do have old women, we do have girls that are looked at in this collection. They all have their own story to tell and I loved it. I really enjoyed this collection. Um, overall, I gave it 4.5 stars because most of these stories were really, really, really good and I would highly recommend this book if you haven't checked it out. It is, to me, what I wanted from Girl, Woman, Other, which was more of a disappointment to me last year. So this one would definitely recommend. Then I finally got one of these big fantasy books out of the way. I have been reading this book since December, like right at the end of December I started this, but then I wasn't feeling well in January and I just 
you know, I still had a good chunk of this left to read. And that is All Violent Ends by Glory Gong. This is the conclusion to this duology. And this is a Shakespeare-inspired tale set in 1920s Shanghai, where we have two rivaling gangs and their heirs, Roma and Juliet. And they have to face a danger that might bring both of their families down. So they decide to bend together. And I really like this duology. I reread the first book at the end of last year and I actually liked it more on reread because I think I knew what I was getting into. A lot of people were disappointed that this is not a real retelling of Shakespeare. It is just inspired by it. So you have some of the landmark things, but then they're twisted around Round. And so it's not a retelling and if you go into this not expecting a retelling at all You will enjoy this more So I bumped up my rating for the first book to four stars and I also gave this one four stars It was just a really fun romp and I think I would have even liked it a little bit better if I listened to this on audio so I think there are more books in this world and I might try those as audiobooks when I'm in the mood because I really, really, really want to read more Chloe Gong. I think that she can be an author similar to, similar to Liber Dugo. That really works for me. Then I finished my next audiobook and I already did a complete reading vlog of the experience which you can watch on my channel and that is for The Changeling by Victor Laval. Victor Laval was one of the five authors I wanted to try this year, hence I did this whole reading vlog and I really really enjoyed this book. In this one we are following a father who has a young child, a young uh, baby basically and we learn about his family history, we learn about his wife and her family's history and we see what happens to this family when tragedy strikes and I don't want to go into it like if you take the name Changeling you can kind of guess what will happen in a way and this deals with um, very heavy topics so I would not recommend this book to people people who are planning to have a child very soon, who are maybe already pregnant or just had a baby. I think then this can be quite triggering and um, that's probably just not very helpful. But I have nothing to do with babies. So I was a little bit worried about that part. I don't really enjoy reading about parenthood. So it still worked. Like there's only a small part where I was just slightly cringing because we had so many diaper changes, but it was all right. Um, but yeah, this is a very dark, heavy story. It deals with racism. It deals with being black and a black father in the US. It deals with this idea of new dads and then also with kind of feelings of a postpartum depression. Someone decided to up in the video as well. Hmm? What are you up to? Where do you want to go? Oh no. So yeah, overall I really really enjoyed this book. I think that the first half was five stars for me, the second half more like a four star, so I rounded it out to four and five stars in the end. At the beginning I really thought this would be a new favorite book, but I will definitely read more Victor Laval. It was really great. Moving right along to the next author I wanted to try this year and that was James Baldwin. So I read Go Tell It on the Mountain, which was his first novel. This is his first novel and it focuses in on a young boy, uh, John, and he lives in this family where he has a younger brother and then two younger sisters and the father is very abusive and we follow this family for one day and this has three parts. In the first part we follow John and the second part we follow three adults around him, his aunt, his mother and his father and through that we get this very comprehensive view of this family, their values and how they came to be and why there is this big abusive situation in the family and then in the last part it just brings it all together again and I really really enjoyed this one as well. I'm not a religious person so everything about religion that is in here which is a very very 
big topic in this book. It wasn't relatable to me because I'm not religious, but it still was very interesting to read about. But I feel like just because of that, the ending lost me a little bit. Like there were some parts where I was just like, what the hell is going on now? Um, but yeah, really enjoyed this and I gave it 4.5 stars as well. The writing was glorious and I will definitely read more James Baldwin. I have always been interested in Giovanni's Room, but I've also heard that it is quite a tragic story. So I thought I start with something else. Look at her. She's so cute. She hates being on camera. She does understand what's happening and she hates it. But moving on. The next book I finished was again a sequel in kind of a duology and that one was The Undertakers by Nicole Glover. Now this is set or this is a book in a series where we follow a couple who solve magical mysteries and it is set right in the time after slavery was abolished and focuses in on black communities. And so we are following these two people. We have Hattie and her husband, whatever, his name, Benji. And um, I've read the first book. I liked it, but I think that the magic system is just a bit convenient. It's a very soft magic system that has to do with constellations. But I liked about it that it basically puts racism into magical terms because there's different types of magic that different kinds of people use. So in the first book, we know that white people use wands because they don't have this kind of intrinsic magic, but black people do, and their magic was forbidden for a long time, and that is this celestial magic. And in the third book, we also get like the tiniest glimpse that there is also more like Chinese, Asian kinds of magic, but it hasn't been like a big part of the second book. And then they're just solving crimes. So in this one, they are looking at some arsons that have happened, but that have also led to a couple of deaths. And so they're trying to find out what is going on. Now, these mysteries are always very convoluted and they usually tie back to their time before slavery was abolished when they were conductors for the for the Underground Railroad and they were saving slaves from the south to the north. And so it is always kind of complicated and I just usually let it wash over me and I'm fine with it. So I gave it 3.5 stars, I enjoyed it, but I can also see that there is probably quite a slim, um, a, a slim group of people who enjoy this kind of book and uh, I'm intrigued to see there will be new books in this world. I think one is coming out this year and one next year. They're following different characters so I will definitely keep my eye out for those because I kind of like the world. I want to see what the author does with it. And then next I finished my like, what is it? My white whale? I have no idea. I finished Babel or Babel by Arf Kuang. Now this was the last Arf Kuang book I had to read. I have read all of her other books that she's published so far uh, or like fiction books. I don't know if she's published like non-fiction academic texts, but uh, this was the last one and this was the one I was most unsure about. Now I originally started this as a body read but then that fell through so I had started the book, I was two, two chapters in, I was not in the mood for it, I was suffering. <laughs> so I was like, well I'm still a completionist so I'm still gonna just read the fucking book and I have to say I was bored for so much of it. I think the beginning was very interesting like when we see how our main character uh, whatever his name was, Robin, Robin Swift, I think. Um, we see how he is plucked out of China by this weird professor dude and he is then brought up quite violently to become a scholar and uh, kind of a linguist so he can go to Babel, which is a part of Oxford and uh, work in this translation department, whatever. So the beginning was very interesting and then we see his like uni years and that is basically just info dumping about how the world works while we go with him to lectures and then he is almost ready to graduate and he's supposed to go on this journey with his friends and 
then things happen and stuff goes wrong and it, and the, uh, in the end lots of people die and I felt like it just it, I wasn't vibing unfortunately like the ending like the actual ending I did kind of enjoy but I was bored for so many parts of this book and so I gave it 3.5 stars. I think for me, it is the weakest of R.F. Uh, Kong's books. But then she also said in the beginning of the book that after writing the Poppy War trilogy, which was kind of what put her on the map and where she wrote what would sell, Bubble is the book that she wrote because she wanted to write it. And I think you can see that because it's not really written for a reader in a way. And so, yeah, I think the biggest problem I had with it is that I just didn't care about Robin so much. And I think if we would have had the POVs of multiple of his friends, then this would have been much more interesting. And we would have seen some of the things that are important more clearly, especially the relationship of Letty and Victoire. And for me personally, Victoire, if I'm not saying that correctly, I'm so sorry. But my, I don't have any French knowledge. Um, but she is the hero of this book, full stop. Like without her, everything would fall apart. And I love her. And um, yeah, but like this like relationship between the girls, I would have loved to see it on the page and not just mentioned when it was convenient. And also because you know which points of Kwong is trying to make, the plot is so predictable. Like there's one big betrayal that you know is coming from the first time you meet that character. Because the foreshadowing is, yeah, it's a lot. So unfortunately not a book for me, but I was kind of expecting that, so I'm not too mad about it. And then on the last day of the month, I finished two more books. One was my reading project for the month and was basically designed to get me back into reading because I struggled so much in January with physical reading. And that was Out There Screaming, edited by Jordan Peele. This is an anthology of short stories that are all black horror. And there are so many like authors in here that I was really intrigued to read from. Some I knew, some I'm interested in. So we have N.K. Jemison, Rebecca Roanhorse, Cadwell Turnbull, P. Jolly Clark, uh, Toji Onyebuchi, and so many more. And uh, Nettie Akorafor, and then so many I hadn't heard of, but whose stories I loved. In the end, this overall collection, I gave four stars, but there were quite a few stories that actually were five stars to me. And there wasn't a single one that I hated, like some I didn't vibe with, but they were still interesting. So yeah, overall, really enjoyed this collection and I'm glad I read it. And I tried to read a story a day. It didn't quite pan out at the end of the month, but it was definitely something that just got me to pick up a physical book at, like once every day. So um, it definitely worked in that regard. And the last book I finished and my first five star book of the year is a nonfiction book. And this might be a little bit niche, but I still want to recommend it to you because I think it is so fascinating. And that is Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. Now, this is uh, my research topic or one of my research topics um, is fat phobia and fat shaming and just everything to do with uh, obesity and the discussion of it and the consequences of it. And so this book has been on my radar since the day it came out. I really wanted to read it. But as it is often in academia, you don't actually have time to just read things you're interested in. So I was so glad to finally have a week off and an open mind to uh, read this book. And it really came to me at the perfect time because I have been struggling with my job a lot 
in the last year and so reading this it kind of reinvigorated my love for my research and the topic and also kind of showed me what are the things that I'm currently missing in the way I do my research and what is expected of me in my current position here. So that was great. But going back to the book, this is, as you would have guessed, a nonfiction book that focuses on the connection of anti-fat bias and then also racism. And this was a connection that I hadn't really considered before, but when you read this book, it makes so much sense. Like I knew of this like broader topic of um, immigration and its connection to disease. This is also a narrative that has been built for centuries. And similarly, we have this one which connects um, these races that were seen as inferior with heavier weight and how that came to be. So in this book we're starting with the 16th century and going basically to today's like medical stuff. But we spend most time before the 21st century. So I really really enjoyed this book. I think it is so fascinating, so interesting, so well written. I think if you are interested in art, in literature, in culture, in just how certain narratives are developed, you should totally check this book out because it touches on so many things like also like fashion and magazines and um, the women's movement, how that played a little bit into that. Religion has a big role in this as well. And I just found it so, so, so fascinating. So I can't recommend this enough. I think it's also written in a way that if you're not a researcher, you can still very much learn from this and enjoy this. You don't need a ton of knowledge about this topic at all. And it's just so interesting. I love it. So yeah, so glad I finally read this. I will take this into my office so I can look at it there every day and remind me why I'm doing research. And I'm just so happy. <laughs> So those were the books that I have read in February. Definitely let me know what you've read, which one was your favorite read of the month. For me, it was definitely Fearing the Black Body. It was just so interesting. And yeah, I'm excited for March reading and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.